Right, that is because, see, if you remember, if you looked at the structure of the notification, the notification has the capability to enter activity reports and task list. Mm -hmm. Right, activity report, which is a detailed report of what you did, textual information. Mm -hmm. Right, so if you want that, then you would go and create a notification. So the order doesn't have that solution. Th that kind of detail, right. So the order mainly provides cost and tracking and stuff, but the notification exactly. has to Okay, so here you see the elements of the maintenance order. It's got an order header. It's got you know object list, which is all the uh, all the objects for which you may be providing maintenance, and then it's got of course uh, several operations because it's like any any other order. You keep track of all the operations that need to be performed, and that will have information about work centers, the control keys, all of that, just like a production order. Right, so we've got that. And then list of material needed, production resources and tools needed. It's just like a production order. And then there's a settlement rule, and then inf uh, you know infrastructure for tracking cost. Right? So it's just like a production order in that sense. Okay. So task, who's going to do the task, which is the work center, any guidelines to be performed, and then settlement rules, which is uh, it's proposed from the master record of the object, but it can be changed. That is to whom is the maintenance work uh, cost, who's going to bear the cost of this maintenance work. Right? By default, you'll say this is for this particular object, technical object, and that might have a cost associated with So you say, well, that object has to bear the cost. But that will be the default proposal, but it can be changed. Right? So here you've got the infrastructure for collecting costs and controlling, estimating all of that. Okay, so object list in the maintenance order where you could have multiple objects mentioned in the maintenance order. Right? So uh, it's possible that in the maintenance notification or in the order header, there's no object mentioned, but there is a separate object list that is attached to the maintenance order, which lists all the objects that need to be maintained. <coughs> so it could be again uh, equipment, functional location, or notifications connected to this. Okay. And multiple notifications can be ordered, uh, can be added to the order. And the first one is called as a header notification. Remember, we said many notifications can be combined into one order. That, that's the part we are talking about here. <coughs> okay. So, this object list is only for reference. And what this says is it doesn't control the order. What that means is that the object list doesn't have any role to play when it comes to cost accounting. Control in the sense of cost accounting. Okay, That is dependent only on the settlement rule, which, you, which may be completely different. Okay, So this object list is only for technical purposes, not for cost accounting purposes. Okay. So now we're going to look at, uh, when you carry out maintenance tasks, corrective maintenance tasks, which is what we're looking at here. When you carry out corrective maintenance tasks, you're going to consume materials in the process, right? Which some of it is going to be stock material, some of it is going to be non-stock material. There's also going to be services which are consumed. All of those are going to take place. So that is the process we're looking at. So here we've got a maintenance order. Okay, so this is a regular maintenance order. And let's say that this order, when it's released here, there is a availability check. So initially when you save the order, it might create some material reservations, which is all the materials that are needed in order to carry out the order. And then you perform an availability check and then you uh, release the order. So it may create a material reservation for you. Right? And then you perform a goods issue against the order, which is, you know, the, the released order is the one that authorizes you to uh, to take goods and then you complete the work and do what is called technical completion. Okay, that's a general flow. So you have the order, you release the order and prior to doing that you reserve the materials, you check availability of materials and then once you release the order you consume the materials. Okay. So this is the general flow for stock uh, so materials. Yeah. Stock materials. Okay, and this is we are seeing the same diagram in a slightly different way. Okay. So you've got initially when you assign components to the order, 
you perform an availability check at that point, right? At the time you save the order, you perform availability checks, right? And once you know the material is available, it places a material reservation for the material, so that if you see the stock requirements list, you'll see the material is reserved for a particular purpose. Then release the order. Again, at the time of order release, you will do an automatic availability check, just like for production orders. Okay, but in this case, uh, maintenance orders can be released even if the material is not available. Okay, because there might be some other work to be performed. Right, with production, most of the time you cannot do anything without the material. With maintenance, it might be possible to do some work. Right, so the order can still start work, but may just get delayed. Um, <clears throat> Okay, this is just, uh, you can plan the bomb components for the reference objects or you can just have freely assigned materials. <clears throat> and again, just like before, you know, reservations and uh, availability checks and so on, we, they are just controlled by customizing as to when they take place and how they are done. Okay, uh, question? Yeah, it does. So there is a startup. It will also come. Yeah. Right. So this is what I was saying. You can release the order even without availability. Uh, and then finally, of course, you've got goods issue uh, with respect to the reservation. That is, planned goods are issued against with reference to the reservation, but there might be unplanned goods also. Remember, we said that in. In maintenance, it's possible that sometimes some materials are required which you didn't plan for. You know, it's it's after all, some uncertainty is uh, is associated with maintenance, right? So in that case, you will just issue that material against the order, not against the reservation, because for planned goods you would have made the reservation, and you're taking it against the reserved thing. Unplanned, it's not going against the reservation. Right? So the difference between issuing against reservation and not issuing against reservation is. If you issue against reservation, of course, the system will cancel the reservation because you now got the material. Against reservation, I mean, uh, without reservation, you're just taking it. Okay. Uh, so here we're talking about materials which are non-stock materials. Stock material, you just go take it from stock. Right? Non-stock material has to be purchased. That's the process we are looking at here. So we've got the order. Once you release the order, then the purchase order is placed for the materials. Because obviously the purchase process can begin only when the maintenance order is released. If it's not released, obviously you're not, you haven't decided to go ahead, so you can't buy the material. Right? So that's why the purchase order release comes after the maintenance order release. And then this is the purchase process. You place the purchase order, you receive the goods, and then uh, do the work and complete the process. Okay, and then of course later on you'll also receive the invoice. Yep. So I have another question. Why can I release even if there is no availability? In the earliest case? Yeah. Well, it's a maintenance order. There could be other work that you can do even without oh, the material. Okay. So that's why. It's it's not production, then it's based on the material alone. You can pre-do stuff on the You can do stuff, you can go diagnose, you know, because some of it is just uh, technical expertise. You can still do something instead of delaying the whole thing. For lack of material. Okay, so uh, the purchase order, uh, you know, can be created depending on configuration, customization. You can say the purchase order would be created when the maintenance order is saved or when it's released. Right, but after it's created, at some point, it depends on customizing how you want to do that. And a uh, maintenance process has a nice document flow just like sales order process. Okay, it's got a powerful document flow system and you can see all the documents in the document flow. Whenever there is any purchasing associated with maintenance, the document flow will show us all of the documents. So, yep. um, in this one, when is the maintenance order released? In, in the blue, when you're saying when order is released or saved, yeah. Are you referring to the purchase order or the maintenance order? No, no, no. This is when is the purchase order released? Okay. The purchase order is released either when the maintenance order is saved 
or when the maintenance order is released. Okay, so here we are talking of maintenance order. Okay. Okay. Because the purchase order has to come after the maintenance order. So the point is at what point in time? Does the purchase order start when we simply save the maintenance order or does it start when we release the maintenance order? Okay, so that's just customization, how you want to do it. So at that time, the, the material usage, the non-spot is procured for consumption. It is for consumption. In this case, it is procured for consumption. Okay. Right? Because it's non-stock, you're buying it only for this. So it will be charged directly to this order. Okay. So here the thing is component assignment for, uh, you know, for the order, for the maintenance order non-stock material, right? So you start the purchase order process, order release, goods, goods received, invoice received. Okay, so standard purchasing process. Uh, the purchase order item is assigned to the maintenance order, which is the point that you were making, right? That it's for consumption. You're buying this not for stock. It's not going to go into stock. It's going to be used up by this maintenance order. So the purchase order is assigned to the maintenance order, right? Assigned being the account assignment object is the maintenance order in this context. <clears throat> and when you receive the goods, once again, the object affected is the maintenance order. Right? Because that will be debited with the purchase order value. <clears throat> because it's for this. Okay, and then yeah. why the term purchase application not the requirement? I don't know. They're just using different terms, that's all. Yeah, that's what I see. Right? And of course, again, when you receive the invoice, there could be some variances, as we've seen before. Right? So initially, you charge the order with some cost based on the value at the time of goods received. But if the invoice price is different for whatever reason, then again, you have to adjust the order. So analysis of maintenance order can be done by value category. Right, so you've finished a maintenance order. You can say this is the total cost we incurred, but you can break it up in different ways. Right, so you can, one thing you can look at it is by elements, different spare parts and so on, or you could break it up in this way, okay, by uh, value category. And these value cat, sorry, these value categories are set in customizing. Right, in customizing, you assign cost elements to different, you, in fact, you create value categories and you assign cost elements to different value categories. Okay, that's just a definition of how you want to. So, for example, which cost elements are included in internal service? Right? Because you're just saying it's a name, internal service, but what exactly do you mean? You say, well, by internal element, I mean, uh, by internal service, I mean these, these specific cost elements. Right? Then it can go to the order, take a look at all the cost elements and summarize them in this way. Okay. So these are the two different ways in which you can look at the cost analysis for a maintenance order. Okay, so when you release an order, right, there are a lot of things which happen when you release a maintenance order. A lot of things can happen. For example, uh, all the reservations become effective and therefore materials can now be withdrawn against these reservations. Of course, papers can be printed. You are now in a position to confirm the order because now the order has been released. You can go do work and then come back and say, I completed the work. And of course, uh, goods issues, goods movements are all possible at this point. Prior to release, none of those things is possible. Okay, so that's the idea. So you can have set it up in such a way that the order gets released immediately when it's created. Uh, and sometimes orders may be created automatically, like we saw, for example, from maintenance plans, right? Planned maintenance. So in those cases, you can set the flag release immediately for those. Right? So those orders, as soon as they are created, will get released immediately. Okay, so that is also done in, in customizing. Right, so the whole point is, you know, is the order released manually? Or is it automatic on creation? It's just a matter of setting it up in customizing. You can do it either way. Okay. And maintenance order can, you know, you print a lot of different things for the maintenance order. Right. So there are things like the job ticket, which provides a complete overview, probably for the maintenance foreman or something like that. 
right? Or you can create what is called as a control ticket, which is an overview, but from an engineering point of view for the order, and so on. Pick list for materials, etc. etc. All of these documents can be printed for the maintenance orders once it's released. Okay, material withdrawal, like we said earlier, there can be planned material withdrawals and unplanned material withdrawals. And we also saw how those are handled. Right? And uh, at the end of the process, right, you, there's lots of material withdrawal that could take place against a maintenance order. At the end of the process, there's this report called material wear use list, which enables us to track how much material was used, how much of it was planned, how much of it was unplanned, and so on. Okay, so for the maintenance order, we'll see this again also. This materials wear use list is the one that allows us to correlate material usage with the order. Okay, so order confirmation, as always, you want to, at the end of the order, you confirm what happened. Right, so uh, you can enter times either through individual entry or collective entry. Individual entry in the sense of for each maintenance item. Right? Remember the maintenance order has many maintenance items. For each item you can enter times or you can have collective entry that is in one screen for all the items or you just enter one completion confirmation for the entire order instead of confirming each operation or each item. And there's a mechanism in uh, SAP called uh, the cross application timesheet CATS. Okay. which is used for lots of different things. It's called cross-application timesheet. So it's across the system. Uh, so for example, it can be used for entering confirmations. In fact, even production confirmations can be entered using CATS. It can, uh, it'll be used, for example, in HR for people to report times, right? So the weekly activity reports and so on can be done through CATS, right? So it's a very generic kind of thing that cuts across several applications, okay? Uh, for each individual activity, you can submit activity reports. Remember, we saw in the maintenance notification there were activities, right? So those are activity reports. And once again, you can enter overall completion for the activity. You can enter confirmation text and so on, which is all textual material. And of course, along with confirmation, you can enter various readings and measurements and so on. Right? That is, you want to know what was the, you know, what were the various readings at the time this work was complete. So you enter all of those. So the next time you go to do the work, there is sort of a history. It's like the doctor take, taking out your chart every time you go to the doctor to visit. So that, that's what this, this is what happens. Okay. There are two statuses for uh, orders. Of course, one is that it's incomplete. There is a status called partially confirmed. Right. So the moment you've got a maintenance order and you enter confirmation for at least one activity, right, then it becomes partially confirmed. Right. When you've confirmed all the activities, it gets a status of CNF or finally confirmed. So status can be reversed. So finally, status can be reversed. Yep. So finally confirmed be reversed? Yeah, can be reversed. Because you may think the work is over. So just when you packed up your box and you leave and the machine starts rolling again. So you go back and try to fix it again, right? So it's possible that that can happen. So these statuses can be reversed. <coughs> okay. Uh, so in lieu of activities, text can be entered with time confirmations, but uh, you know these are not. Remember, this is the same thing that we said earlier, that uh, you know instead of confirming individual activities at the level of the order. You can just enter some things at the level, in fact, use the notification as an order, right? But then structured analysis and cost gathering and all that gets lost. Okay. Uh, overall confirmation, once again, you can get all of these pieces of information. This is a technical part of the thing for every operation or for all operations together. Uh, get the materials, measuring documents, etc. Et all of this confirmation information can be entered at the time the order is confirmed. <coughs> You can do it in one single screen or all of those additional things are provided. Okay, so the status when you do a technical completion of the order, right, that you say all the work is complete, that's called technical completion or TECO, right. So in that case, what happens is it, it, you, 
you have limited ability to change the order. Once an order has the status technically complete, right, then you can't go and make all sorts of changes that you would like. But of course, you can reverse it and then it becomes alive once again. But so long as the status is technically complete, there are these kinds of changes that you can do. Right? There, if the status is technically completed, you can create a settlement rule for the order if there is no rule already created. Because you might have created a settlement rule at the time you created the order. If not, you can create one now. Right? And you can set the deletion flag for unused purchase requisitions. Right? So right. It's possible that you initiated the purchase of some material purchase requisitions, but it might turn out that you never really needed them. You completed the work and the materials you thought you needed, you never uh, really needed. So you can say, okay, go ahead and delete all those purchase reservation, uh, requisitions. Right? So you could set the deletion flag. You can close any open material reservations that you had acquired. Right? You thought you were going to need all the materials. You reserve them, but now you completed the order. Clearly, you don't need those materials. So you can close the reservations and similarly you might have reserved certain you know work centers capacities you can release those okay so those are the kinds of changes that you can make to the order uh, at this point after it's technically complete so do you have to do those in individually do you set it up and customize it and then it just automatically happens or yeah when you it can be set up and customize it it can be definitely set up and customized and that. Okay. So you can lock or unlock the order, set the deletion flag for requisitions, which we said. Uh, you can perform outstanding good movements in invoice postings. Right? Those things can still happen against the order. Okay, which is that you know, any receiving of material and so on. The order can of course still continue to receive costs, and you can change the settlement rule. Right? Those are the only limited changes that you can do to the order once it is technically complete. Okay. Now, like we said earlier, 